Okay guys, welcome back. We've been drawing phasers here. Um, I'm going to go right from where I left off here. I've got my three phasers now drawn, all tip to tail. The impedance is going to be the sum of the three, the phaser sum of the three. So it is going to be a line that starts at the beginning of the first one and ends at the end of the last one. That there is the impedance. Now I can calculate that, but if I want to do it, the first thing I got to do is figure out how long this green line is. And we call that green line X, okay? And X is equal to XL minus XC, or XC minus XL. And it doesn't matter which one you do. Actually, it does. You take the bigger number and you subtract the smaller number, all right? So don't worry about it. X will be 132.6 minus 113. Just take the bigger number and subtract the smaller number. So X is going to equal um, 132.6 minus 113.1. And I'm going to calculate that 132, whoops, 2.6 minus 113.1. It is 19.5, 19.5 ohms. Okay guys, so now we have an R that is uh, 50 ohms and we have an X, that little side right there, that is 19.5 ohms. That will allow me to calculate the Z or the impedance. The impedance of this circuit is going to be the square root of 50 squared plus 19.5 squared. All right guys. And uh, I'm going to do that right here, 50 squared plus 19.5 squared equals root equals, it is 53.67 ohms, okay, and that goes right here, 53.67 ohms. The impedance is RT, it is the phasor sum of the three gadgets in this particular circuit that are limiting current, okay? And there we calculated it using Pythagorean theorem. Now, the next thing I'm gonna calculate, guys, is the current. So, all this business was A. Over here, I'm gonna calculate B. The current in this circuit will be the voltage in the circuit over everything that's limiting current, uh, E over Z. We're talking about the current of the whole circuit, so we're going to use the voltage of the whole circuit and divide it by the impedance of the whole circuit. 120 divided by, uh, what, 53.67, guys? Let's try that. 120 divided by that answer equals... 2 amps, 2.236 amps, okay, so 2.236 amps, and uh, everything is going really good, now guys, it says EXC, that's going to be C, and what that's asking is, what is the voltage drop across that particular gadget right there? Well, I'm going to apply Ohm's law to it. I know how much current's flowing through it. I know how much, you know, how many ohms it is. So, EXC, guys, is going to be I times XC. Okay, it's the current times the resistance in quotes, and so it is going to be 2.236 times. Um, I don't know, 132? Okay, so let's try that. I've got my current in there already. I'm going to multiply that by 132.6, and the voltage dropping there is 296 volts, 296.5. Uh, volts, all right, which is interesting because it's even more than the supply voltage. Maybe that's uh, a wrong or something. What do you think? Negative, not wrong. You know what we're going to do? E, F, G, F is going to be uh, 
EXL equals, and uh, G is going to be EXC equals, because even though this doesn't ask for it, uh, oops, not EXC, we're going to make this ER, okay? We're going to calculate the other two voltage drops right there, just for fun. And um, we'll do those next here. We got this one, 296.5 volts. We're going to draw the, uh, do this one. It should be I 2.236 times XL, Ohm's Law. Let's try it. <clears throat> 2.236 times 113.1 equals 252.9 volts. Okay, another one that's higher than the uh, supply. ER should be I times R, 50. Let's try that. 2.236 times 50. 111.8 volts. All right, guys, so we calculated all those voltages. We're going to try them out in a minute, but let's calculate the phase angle here for a second. All right, guys? The phase angle, I can see it right there. All right, it is going to be opposite over adjacent, inverse tan. So let's see, we'll do uh, D right here, okay? The phase angle should be the opposite, which is X, right? 19.5 over adjacent, 50. Shift tan or a tan to the minus one, let's figure it out here. 19.5 divided by 50 equals shift 10 equals 21, 21.3 degrees, all right? E, is this circuit leading or lagging? Whoops, this is supposed to be 21.3 degrees. Now, this one's really tricky, guys. Students are always getting messed up on this. Is this circuit leading or lagging? Now. If I'm talking about leading or lagging, I am always, 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 always talking about the current, all right? Because anytime you have something leading, you have something lagging, right? If you've got the current lagging, then the current voltage must be leading. So, you know, leading or lagging, just remember that I'm asking about whether the current's leading or lagging every time, okay? Because that's how we do it in this industry. We just say, oh, that circuit lags, or that circuit leads, or capacitors lag, or cap or sorry, inductors lag and capacitors lead. The, the way it's always dealt with is you're re always referring to the current. So we're gonna look at this phasor diagram here and decide whether the current is leading or lagging. Now I can see here, we're gonna compare it to the impedance, okay, that's how we're gonna do it. Impedance or voltage, depending on which circuit you're looking at or which phasor diagram you're looking at. But I'm noticing that the current is counterclockwise, and counterclockwise phasors are always leading. So this circuit leads, all right, guys, because the current is leading. It is counterclockwise, all right, and that messes students up all the time. Now, we got a few more minutes. What I want to do for fun, it's not part of this question officially, but I want to add these crazy voltages together because the sum of these voltages, the phasor sum, had better be 120 volts. And if it ain't, it means, well, it means I got to start this video over, okay? Because I've made a giant mistake somewhere along the line. So if I were to take a, make a phasor diagram, let's see if I can fit all this on the screen here, guys. Let's do it like this. Okay, well here, we'll put it right in the center of the screen here. If I were to make a voltage phasor diagram for this series circuit, and by the way, there are always two phasor diagrams for every series circuit. There's the impedance phasor diagram. It's going to have all ohms around it. There's going to be a voltage phasor diagram. It's going to be all voltages. But they look very similar, right guys? So 
Here's my voltage phasor diagram. We're still going to compare all our voltage phasors to the current because this is a series circuit. I'm going to draw my first voltage on here. I'm going to start out with ER, wherever it is, okay, right there, ER, 118 long. So uh, let's make a little phasor diagram, call it, or a little phasor here, call it ER. 111.118, 111 volts, okay? We are going to draw EXC next, just for fun, all right? Now, EXC needs to be drawn so that the current is leading, which means it's going straight down so that the current is counterclockwise. But I'm going to move it tip to tail. It's going to end up sitting right here, all right? And this is probably going right off your screen, right, guys? So let's move that up a bit. I got these handy, you know, handy tape on here so I can see when we're in shot or not, and uh, I probably screw that up quite a bit. So this is going to be E X C and E X C two ninety six point five. Okay, we're going to draw E R next. What color should I use? Purple. Okay. ER, where is it? No, no, EXL next. Uh, right there. 252.9, so I'm going to stick it in right there. It's a little shorter than that one, right? This is EXL, and it is 252.9 volts. Now this, we're going to call EX, and it is going to be the bigger one minus the smaller one every time okay so we called it x when we were dealing with resistance values we call it ex because we're dealing with voltage values so ex guys is going to be 296.5 minus 252.9 looks like that voltage there is 43.6 volts all right now the Resultant it should be this line right here, right? This is going to be the resultant. And the resultant is going to be E total. And E total, guys, is going to be the square root of 111.8 squared plus 43.6 squared. All right, so let's just check it out here for a second. 111.8 squared plus 43.6 squared equals, and then I'm going to take the square root of that, and he equals, oh yeah, 120 volts, okay? And that is the voltage in the circuit, because the phase or some of those voltages got to be equal to the sum of the, you know, the rise, the voltage rise in the circuit, okay? So I've done a little check there just for fun, didn't need to do it optional do it if you want to it does check a lot of your answers and by the way if i use this phasor diagram to calculate the angle guess what i'm going to get 21.3 and by the way if i uh, use this diagram here to, to decide whether the circuit current's leading or lagging i can see here there's the voltage you know this is e total right I say R here, but that's actually resultant, not resistance, okay? E total right there, there's the current, counterclockwise, leading. Have a good day. You can try Unit 2, Hendo 2, all the other questions. All right, guys, for homework. Hey, get on your email, let me know how I'm doing, okay? Am I going too fast, too slow, uh, boring, terrible? Uh, let me know what I can do to improve. Okay, guys? Have a good one. Bye-bye.